Hi, my name is Andy Sykes. I'm an award-winning animator and illustrator based in the UK. Welcome to my lessons on Flash CS5. This is my website, hexjibber.com. You can check out my animation, my illustration, my interactive work, and also more of my video tutorials in Flash. Enjoy! Hi, in this lesson we're going to be taking a look at movie clip effects. Now in these tutorials, if you've been looking through them, you'll notice I've talked about graphic symbols a lot. Graphics are great for doing looped animations, but they don't have some of the features that movie clips have. Now I've got a picture of a square here. I'm going to right click on that and convert it to a symbol. But this time, instead of making it a graphic, I'm going to make it a movie clip. I'm going to call it square. Okay, I'll zoom back out again. And you see, just like with a graphic, I get a box around the edge of my shape. If I click on it, we get a different set of options over here in the properties to the ones we'd get with a graphic. And you see, we've got our color effects, that's normal, we'd have those with graphics. Down at the bottom, we've got something called filters. Now this is where movie clips differ from graphics. Down here, I can add a filter. And you see, when I click on that, I get a whole host of options. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I've got drop shadow, blur, glow, bevel, gradient glow, gradient bevel, adjust colour. You might be familiar with some of these from Photoshop and other image editing programs. The first one I'm going to show you is glow. This is one that I use quite a lot for doing lasers and uh, kind of beam effects. So if I click on glow, you can see I get these options here. Uh, I can choose how blurred my glow is, what colour it is, the quality. Uh, knockout and inner glow. So I'm going to change my glow color to blue. I'm going to stick it on high. Now these quality settings affect how much memory and computer resources your glow is going to use up. So it's fine to use high if you're planning on rendering it out to video, but if you're using it for the web, high is maybe not such a great idea because the computer that's running your SWF file has to process all this information. And if it's quite a slow computer, it's going to run into problems and start lagging and dropping frames. So now I've, I've made it blue, I've given it a high quality. And you can see over here that we've got a bit of a blue glow already. But to exaggerate that effect, I'm going to stick the blur up. And at the moment, my X and Y blur are locked together so that they blur the same amount. I'm going to zoom out a bit and you can see I'm already getting a nice blue glow there. If I click Inner Glow, it'll stick that glow on the inside of my object. If I click Knockout, it'll just show the glow and get rid of the object. Or if I don't have Inner Glow on, I can get rid of the object and just have the glow outside it. Equally, we can adjust the strength, so I can shove that up to the top and make it a really kind of dark blue glow. And if I wanted both an inner and an outer glow, I could add another glow filter. Maybe that could be red, but I could tick in a glow on that one. At the moment it's blurring the blur, so I'm going to shove it up to the top. Stick that on high. And you can see that we have to put our inner glow first in the order of filters. You can see we've got a kind of red interior. I might shove my blur up a bit on the red and you can see that we've got a lot of red in the center of our square with a blue glow outside it. So that's blurs. If you want to get rid of an effect, you just click on it in the filters menu and you can delete it. So I'm going to delete both those filters for the moment. I'm going to add drop shadow. This is pretty simple. You will have seen this on Photoshop and uh, lots of other programs. You can adjust the blurriness, the strength, the angle that it's at. So if I want to shove it up to the top left, I can do that and also the distance, so how far away that drop shadow is and the colour of the drop shadow. You can choose to get rid of the object, have an inner shadow. Hide objects makes the object transparent and knockout cuts it out completely. So that's drop shadows. Blur is another good one. I don't use this a lot but it's very powerful. You can see I've got it selected and the edge of our shape it's already blurring a bit. Now the idea of blurring vectors is quite 
an interesting one. Vectors are infinitely scalable and really you can only blur something that's made of pixels. So what Flash does is, is it caches your vector as a bitmap once it starts blurring it. This does take up a lot of computer resources so again it's fine if you use it on a low setting for the web or you can use it on a high setting for video. I'm going to stick it on high for fun and shove the blur up. So you see if I shove the blur up really high it almost doesn't look like a square anymore it just becomes a sort of well blur. There you go that's blur. So you can see there's lots of other effects bevel and adjust color etc. I'll give you the chance to have a fool around with those yourself. I'm just going to use the blur that I had on earlier to illustrate animating these filters. So you can see up here in my content layer I've got one keyframe of this movie clip symbol. I'm going to insert keyframe at frame 55 and create a classic tween. And in my second keyframe I'm going to click on my symbol and I'm going to pull that blur right down. So when I play it through you can see that it pulls it from out of focus and blurred to super sharp and in focus. And you can do this with all filters. You can do it with both classic tweens and the new types of tweens. And it's a way of, say if I wanted this object here, this square, to appear like it was traveling very quickly, I could start it off on the left hand side very blurred, then move it over to this side. So it goes from moving very quickly to slowing down. And if I stick a bit of easing on that, so if I ease it out, that'll kind of exaggerate that effect. Or say, if I stuck a keyframe in the middle where my symbol was very blurred, like that, and maybe turned off the X and Y mirroring so it could be very horizontally blurred and had it with no blur at all, both at the end and the beginning. So I can slide it down to zero on the first keyframe, then on the last frame it's already on zero. So let's play that through. I've shortened the frames a bit now. You can see that that just sort of completes that effect of it blurring out. So that's movie clip effects. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi. If you enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity book on my website, hexjibber.com. It's suitable for kids and adults alike, and you can get it from Amazon, Play.com, and WH Smiths. Cheers.